Hey guys, it's Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about memory Alzheimer's and the insulin connection. Now, this is my opinion, but I believe that any problem with memory, like going in a room, you can't remember where you went in there, uh, short-term memory, long-term memory, dementia, uh, Alzheimer's is related to a starvation of glucose in the brain. I mean, glucose is the primary fuel for the brain, but it can't get in there if the, if the key doesn't allow it to go in there. And that's the insulin connection. So there's a condition called insulin resistance. What does that mean? It means that the insulin in certain parts of your body is too high over a long period of time and your body starts to resist or block insulin. And insulin allows the glucose to go in the cells, allows the glucose to go in the brain, allows the glucose to go in the muscle. So basically your brain despite how much insulin is being pumped out from the pancreas, is not going into the brain. So you have a situation where you have low insulin and low glucose in the brain. That's gonna give your body feedback in the feedback loops back to the pancreas to make more insulin. So an average person with insulin resistance has five to seven times more insulin than someone that is normal, okay? So that creates another situation called amyloid deposits. Now what is amyloid deposits? It's interesting because Alzheimer's patients have this unique little fibrous tissue in the brain. It's a protein fibrous tissue called amyloids. And that is a major complication, significant complication to insulin therapy or if you have too much insulin. So that's another connection. All right. And also they found on PET scans, which basically scan the body and look for places of sugar metabolism in people with um, Alzheimer's, you have a low sugar or glucose metabolism. So basically, your brain is starving of glucose, all right? That's what's really causing memory problems on a physical level. So this explains why you crave sweets, because the brain is not getting glucose. So basically, the worst thing you can do is start eating sweets, all right? So here's what I would recommend, or what I would do if I had any of these issues. Number one, cut out the sugar completely, all the hidden sugars. That means the breads and the pastas and the cereals and the juice and even the fruit at this time, as well as alcohol. Um, and even yogurt has a bit, uh, it's high in sugar. So what you have to do is start reading the labels and make sure that you focus on the sugar grams. Try to get them less than one gram, okay? That's step one. Number two, the other problem that people um, have with insulin resistance is that every time you eat, you spike insulin. So what you want to do is you want to have less meals. So do two or three meals, no snacking in between because you're going to spike insulin. The whole goal is to reduce insulin to allow this insulin to heal so you can start absorbing more uh, fuel to the brain. Your body, your brain can convert protein into glucose or even fat, dietary fat into glucose, but it can also run on ketones, which is an alternative fuel source, and that comes from cutting down the dietary sugar in the body. Your body switches over to fat burning, makes ketones. The brain loves it, okay? Um, so you have, number one, you have um, cut out the sugar, cut out the hidden sugars, have less meals, no snacking, okay? Make sure that your, um, another really cool tip is to have apple cider vinegar in your water. Why? Because apple cider vinegar reduces insulin resistance. It actually helps improve that situation. And these are just tips. So all I'm saying is you go ahead and try this and see if it works for you and post your comments below. I'll see you in the next video.